Hi everyone. I wanted to talk about a case that I had today and give you a little pelvic hip hack. I was using imaging today, so I'm still in clinic, so I was using the imaging with a case, a hip labral tear that this person is trying to be non-surgical. She's trying not to have a hip scope and I'm supporting her in that process and she's doing really well. Uh, this person has traveled out of state, so she's spending significant time and effort and she's going to spend about seven, 14, 15, 17 hours with me in this week to um, kind of accelerate the process and progress, which means we will do about six months of work approximately or so in three days. What has come out of that is we are fast tracking and uh, imaging allows me to do that. We are fast tracking prog progress and we are trying to connect the adore your pelvic floor with, with connecting it to the core, right? So we're connecting the core and the pelvic floor. Now, PTs, pelvic PTs, ortho PTs spend a heck of a bunch of money, a bunch of time trying to learn how to do that in the most efficient way possible. And there's all kinds of arguments as to what is the best. But as uh, the voice to pelvic floor physio and as a singer, I can tell you singing is a sport. So here's what I did today. I used vocalization with a patient, uh, with this individual and we compared that against using the pelvic floor as we were imaging the lateral abdominal wall. So right in here. So I was visualizing the ratios between the transversus abdominis and the internal oblique. Usually the internal oblique will be about as twice as thick as the transversus abdominis on imaging. And so I said, okay, let's try pelvic floor contraction. And on day one, she tried a pelvic floor contraction nothing happened in the TA and the IO, and it should. You should see a change in diameter increase. Nothing changed, it was not connected, not coordinated. And the obturator internus also was off on the painful side. So everything that we measured really was pointing towards, um, was validating her symptoms, right? It was connecting up. So that's exciting also, That's exciting also, but as well, um, it is giving us objective measures in order to move forward and work, you know? Um, it would be awful if someone came in and complained of pain um, in the left, left hip like this individual, and then you, did, you measured all these things objectively with imaging and didn't find anything, right? That means you're still not finding root cause, you still have to deep, dive deeper, right? So we didn't have to dive too deep and I asked her to vocalize. Now on day one, she could not vocalize without creating a downward pressure gradient, a strain, if you will, kind of like if you were constipated and pushing down, which by the way, you should never do. <laughs> so she was creating a strain and pushing just by saying, uh-huh. It was going, uh-huh, uh-huh, and it was pushing down. So after retraining that, which took both internal and external work on the pelvic floor, after retraining her vocalization, after retraining the paradoxical pelvic floor activity that she was having, having by day two, which is today, I asked her to go and do a pelvic floor contraction first, and she could, a few millimeters of activity in the pelvic floor, which is good. And then I said, okay, I want you to give me an that's it, just a hum. Most people, even vocalists, even professional vocalists that I work with will not get any more than three seconds, four seconds, five seconds, if they're really struggling. She did great. She got to nearly 12 seconds. And here's the thing about it. She nearly doubled the diameter of the transversus abdominis with perfectly beautiful ratios that you want musculoskeletally. And what did it was not actually trying to activate the core or the pelvic floor. It was actually vocal toning. So that shows us our little proof of concept about connecting the voice to the pelvic floor and 
that sometimes you need to do a top-down approach. I teach four different ways to connect up the core and the pelvic floor. One of them is a top-down approach, okay, out of those four approaches, and that is through using the voice. If you don't have imaging, it's very hard to determine, nearly impossible to determine what's happening unless you've got your hand up in someone internally the whole time, which is very uncomfortable for a person to spend you know, over an hour with someone internally checking them all, the whole time. So really ultrasound imaging is a, a much more sustainable way to do this. So adoring your pelvic floor means also adoring your voice.